Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. It's 37 degrees outside today and windy. So I thought it'd be a good time to talk to you about my most recent forge. So the first thing you notice, other than the size of this, is it's more industrial looking. And of course, we've got brakes on the wheels and that keeps them from going round and round. This thing is two blocks high, so it's 18 inches high internally by four blocks wide. So it's actually a little bit bigger than I would have liked. After I built this, I found out that it was probably one block too large on the side. It's, it's a little bit, it's just too big, and I didn't think that would actually be a thing, but it is. So the next one I'm gonna build for home is going to be only three blocks on the side, and that'll make it a more manageable and transportable size. But this thing has no problem rolling around. But anyway, to operate the lid on this, you simply step on the foot pedal, the lid pops up half an inch, and then you can rotate it out of the way, and then it drops into a little notch here and it locks in place. That way you have access to everything inside. You can then use this as a, a tabletop so you can temporarily put things on it, although I don't officially recommend anyone do this. You can. The reason the top of this is gray is because I used Kex Bond on this to hold everything together. Yes, it still has a welded steel cage on the outside like all my others, but this one I actually bonded the bricks together with a Tex Bond high temperature mortar and it worked really well. And then I slathered the entire top and bottom of this lid in text bond as well because this lid is only supported around the perimeter. And so this whole center section is just hanging there uh, depending on the compression of the steel around the outside and the text bond holding it together. The inside of this, of course, is made pretty much like my other ones. I did actually angle the coil slots on this one 15 degrees back so that as the coil expands, it simply falls into the slots deeper rather than try to pop out of the slots like on some of my other ones. On my first electric one where I had to use staples to hold the coils in, this one simply just falls right into the slot. This one also uses a larger 5,000 watt coil instead of the 1,500 watt coil from my previous one. And it only goes around twice, but it heats up sufficiently fast. It takes about two hours to heat up this whole thing to 1,400 degrees or so. So it works out just fine. But I think the coolest thing about this is the industrial look and the, the way this lid operates. It's simply one pipe inside of another. A roll pin here provides the positive stops inside these little grooves that I cut. The foot pedal is just some bent. The main arm is 3 16 by one inch steel. The pedal itself is just bent out of eighth inch steel and it's pivoted here on a quarter 20 bolt. So nothing fancy there. Of course, nothing about this entire thing is fancy, and that's why it's something easy that you guys can actually make. Now, the one major difference between this one and my other is this industrial looking control over here, which is really not that industrial at all. I did actually have to custom make an electrical box over here. As you can see, it flips open like so. That way, all my connections are in there so that when it is time to replace the coil, because it does burn out, it's much easier to do here than having to flip the forge over and pull pins and things like that from the bottom. That way it's all easily accessible right here on the side, much like a commercial kiln would be. Uh, I, I'll say I was slightly inspired by their designs. And this tube here is simply just some bent conduit. I angled it back, I think 15 degrees, so that it makes the controller a little easier to read. Inside this box is all the stuff, the solid state relay. This, I'm still, I'm still on Inkbird PID controllers, they're really cheap and they work really well, so I actually have one or two extras laying around at home that I haven't used yet. And then the entire thing in here is controlled by this little just master on off switch, which all it does is it cuts power to the PID controller. And so if the controller's off, obviously the coils are off as well. I think what I am gonna do at some point is add a second switch so that I can independently control the coil, the solid state relay power from the controller power because sometimes when I don't have power to the coils, I want to be able to see what the temperature is inside. And the only way right now to turn the coils off while still having that on is to change the temperature. And that's three or four button pushes to set the temperature below its current value or below room temperature. As you can see right now, I've got it, maybe I've got it set on 10 degrees so that these things aren't super hot at the moment. Um, so it's just sitting at room temperature right now, which luckily is 27.9. Outdoors, it's about two Celsius. So 
yes, I have had to get used to Celsius a little bit. Also on this one here, I did seal the lid with some gasket material because my other one, they, you know, they leak a little bit around the lid. So, but this thing is pretty much sealed up tight. I would call it waterproof, but I'm not going to because you should never get this fire brick wet because once this heat comes back on, that water's gonna boil and it's gonna spall your brick and it's just gonna blow apart like crazy. But it's definitely, it's definitely sealed up tight. Like I said, it's just, it's too big. Yes, it would work also well for pottery, but I, I don't ever do pottery. Maybe someday, but not going to likely. So the next one I build for home use is gonna be just three bricks wide, and that'll give me a nice nine or so inch internal space. But as you can see, this thing is absolutely cavernous. You can put several crucibles in here at the same time, which is handy, but it's also really deep. And so, I, yes, I just got a little bit overzealous. But anyway, that's pretty much it. This is something you can definitely build yourself. Just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.